Okay, so let's talk about cephalosporin now. As you can see, its structure is very much similar as compared to penicillin, okay? But it has, along with nitrogen and this carboxyl group, which in the beta lactam ring, which is the target to break it if you want to, right? If you, if it, if it would be broken, right? So here we have two R groups, right? This is R2 and R1. This is one thing you need to notice here, okay? So when we talk about cephalosporin, okay? So you have five generations, but we will talk about the four generations here, okay? And very slightly, we'll try to discuss the other one. Okay, so uh, you see, the first two, okay, have good coverage against the positive, gram-positive bacteria, okay, and the third and fourth generation, they are, uh, they would attack on the gram-negative bacteria, okay, so let's talk about it. So the structure and mechanism of action of cephalosporin is that cephalosporins have a beta-lactam ring, as you can see. Substitutions at R1 determine antibacterial activity and substitution at R2 determines pharmacokinetics, right? Okay. So cephalosporins have the same mechanism of action as penicillin. Uh, okay. Pharmacological properties. So cephalosporin are widely distributed in body fluids, selected agents, um, penetrate, PSF. Then we have probenicide allow, uh, well, sorry, pro, uh, probenicide slows the secretion of cephalosporin. Each newer generation of cephalosporin is increasingly resistant to penicillinase. Third generation cephalosporins are sensitive to another class of beta lactamase, the cephalosporinases. So these are the genes are uh, are located on the chromosome as opposed to plasmid. Wait a minute. So now let's talk about the cephalosporins in more detail, okay? So the selected drugs and their therapeutic uses, okay? So cephalosporins are categorized by their antibacterial spectrum, as I talked earlier, or are inactive against enterococci and MRSA. Uh, methicillin resistant staphylococci, right? Okay, so first generation cephalosporin contains these cepha, uh, cephalexin, cephazolin, and cephadroxin. Wait. So these agents have good activity against gram positive organisms, staphylococci and some gram-negative organisms, okay? So they're more effective against gram-positive one, right? Okay. First generation cephalo uh, cephalosporins are used mainly for escherichia clapsilla infection and penicillin and sulfonamide resistant urinary tract infections. They're also used prophylactically in various surgical procedures. Uh, wait a minute. These agents do not penetrate into CSF. Then we have second generation cephalosporins. So second generation cephalosporins include uh, cephozitin. Then we have ceph uh, cephaclor, ceph uh, uroxin, and then we have cephotetin, and then we have ceprozil. Okay. So these agents have somewhat broader spectrum of activity than first generation drugs. They're used in the treatment of streptococcal infections as well as infections caused by Escherichia coli, uh, Klebsiella, and Proteus species. So most anaerobes, with the exception of Clostridium def uh, difficile, are covered as well. Second generation phalosporins are used primarily in the management of urinary and respiratory tract, bone and soft tissue infections and prophylactically in various surgical procedures. 
So second generation agents have to a greater extent been supplanted by third generation agents with the exception of uh, cephu, uh, uroxin. So these agents do not penetrate the CSF. Now, when we talk about the third generation cephalosporins, so they include ceftinib, cefexim, um, cefotaxin, ceftizoxin, uh, uh, okay. Then we have ceftazidim and ceftriazone, okay. So these agents have enhanced activity against gram-negative organisms. They demonstrate high potency against H. influenza and gonorrhea and meningitis, enterobacter, salmonella, indole positive, proteus, and uh, seracea uh, species and escherichia coli, and moderate activity against anaerobes. So, cefoperazone and uh, ceftazidim have excellent activity against. Uh, P. urogynosa, so ceftriaxone is used for sexually transmitted infections, used for gonorrhea as well as in empiric therapy for community acquired meningitis. With the exception of cefoperazone, third generation cephalosporin, penetrates CSF, so these agents are secreted by kidney except. Uh, cephoperazone and ceftriaxone, which are excreted through the biliary tract, thus enabling the use of these agents for the infections of biliary tree. Third generation cephalosporins are used to treat gonorrhea, Lyme disease, meningitis, and serious hospital acquired gram negative infections alone or in combination with an amidoglycoside. When we talk about four generations of allosporin, so we have uh, cefipim, which is uh, which has a powerful coverage against Pseudomonas species as well as other gram-negative bacteria. Uh, then ceftriaxone uh, uh, fosamil is a prodrug that is active against uh, MRSA, used to treat skin infections and community acquired pneumonia. It has limited activity against beta lactamase producing bacteria. The adverse effect in drug interactions include that cephalosporins most commonly wait a minute most commonly cause hypersensitivity reactions. Five to ten percent of penicillin sensitive person are also hypersensitive to cephalosporin. Why exactly is that? Because the structure looks similar, right? And the site of action is also same if, if you want to inhibit their action, right? So if somebody is resistant to penicillin, they would automatically be resistant or hypersensitive to cephalosporins as well, right? Then we have alcohol intolerance is seen with uh, cephamandol and cephatriaxone. If you remember, I created this slide uh, in one of your lectures where we discuss uh, disulfiram like uh, symptoms, right, which included flushing, right, and all that because of uh, acetal dehyde accumulation and all that, right. So look into that if you have forgotten this. Okay, cephalosporin may cause bleeding disorders. These disorders can be prevented by vitamin K administration. Cephalosporins may be nephrotoxic when ad administered with diuretics. These agents may cause super infection with gram positive organism or fungi. Cephalosporins are the number one cause of hospital acquired C. difficile colitis, a potentially life threatening infection. Then we have other beta lactam drugs which include. Astri, uh, astrionam, okay. So, this is naturally occurring monobactam lacking the, oh, oh, wait, okay. So, lacking the 
thiazolidine uh, ring that is highly resistant to beta lactamase. Uh, please change it to beta lactamase, okay? Okay, wait. I don't know why I did not do that. This is beta lactamase. Wow. Okay. Wait. Okay. Hmm. All right, so it has good activity against gram negative organisms, but it lacks activity against anaerobes and gram positive organisms. This agent demonstrates no cross reactivity with penicillins or cephalosporins for hypersensitivity reactions. It is administered parenterally. It is useful for various types of infections caused by Escherichia coli, Klebsiella pneumonia, H influenza, uh, B. uroginosa. Enterobacter species, Citrobacter species, and P. mirabilis. Wait a minute. Okay. All right. Then we have gar uh, carbapenem. Okay. So these are relatively resistant to. Uh, oh, why, 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 why? This is again beta lactamase. Wait a minute. This is beta lactamase. Okay. All right okay they demonstrate no cross resistance with other antibiotics imipenem is marketed with the combination products okay so celestin uh, celestatin uh, okay is an inhibitor of renal uh, dehydropeptidase uh, de one okay which inactivates uh, imipenem so these agents are useful for infections caused by penicillinase producing SRS, Escherichia coli, Klebsiella species, entire bacteria species, H. influenza, among others. So they are powerful agents used for pseudomonas infections. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and skin rashes, and at higher doses, freezers are the mo uh, are their most common adverse effects, particularly for emipenem. Wait a minute. Okay. Then we have uh, other inhibitors of bacterial cell wall biosynthesis. So we have vancomycin and telovencin. So vancomycin binds to the terminal end of the growing peptidoglycan to prevent further elongation and cross-linking due to inhibition of transglycosylase so this results in decreased cell membrane activity and increased cell lysis telovacin has action similar to that of vancomycin and also daptomycin it is this okay vancomycin is active against gram positive organisms resistant strains have been reported so vancomycin is used in serious MRS infections in patients allergic to penicillin and cephalosporin and to treat antibiotic uh, associated enterocolitis. So telovacin is used to treat skin infections. Vancomycin penetrates CSF only during inflammation. Vancomycin is administered by slowly uh, slow IV infusion except in the treatment of enterocolitis when it is given orally. Rapid infusion of vancomycin may cause anaphylactic reactions and redneck syndrome, flushing caused by the release of histamine, right? So really high levels of vancomycin may cause uh, autotoxicity with permanent auditory impairment and also nephrotoxicity. It is potentially teratogenic. We have be uh, bacitracin. So bacitracin inhibits dephosphorylation uh, and reuse of the phospholipid uh, required for acceptance of N-acetyl, buramic acid, pentapeptide, the blocking, uh, the building block of the peptidoglycan complex. So bacitracin is most active against gram-positive bacteria. Bacitracin is used only topically in combination with neomycin or 
polymyxin for minor infections. Then we have uh, cycloserin. So cycloserin inhibits alanine uh, race, uh, race mace of the and the incorporation of alanine into the peptoglycan pentapeptide. So it is active against microbacteria and gram negative bacteria. This agent is used only as a second line drug for the treatment of urinary uh, tract infection and tuberculosis. At high doses, cycloserin may cause severe CNS toxicity, including seizures and acute psychosis. Then we have daptomycin. So it is bacteriocidal agent that inhibits um, and uh, depolarizes the cell membrane, resulting in the loss of cell membrane potential and rapid cell death. So daptomycin has bacterial, antibacterial action similar to that of vancomycin. It is active against vancomycin resistant strains. So daptomycin may cause myopathy. Then we have phosphomycin. So it inhibits the enzyme uh, enolpyruvate transferase and thereby in interferes downstream with the formation of bacterial cell wall specific and acetyl muramic acid. This oral agent is active against both gram positive and gram negative organisms. It is used to treat lower uh, UIT uh, infections. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Wait a minute. Uh oh, wait a minute. 